Hey, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media, and shame on me. I haven't talked to him since he joined a new team. Horrible, horrible host, Chris Rose. Great guest and co-host, Lucas Giolito of your Boston Red Sox. Hi, my friend. How's it going? What's up, Chris? I'm doing, I'm doing great. I'm doing good. God, I you're not like a it, horrible co-host. I don't know what you're uh, talking about. No. I don't know. It, it's it's me. But I want. I like letting you guys be in the off season. You know, you have, you work so much mid February all the way through October, and God, you know. I mean, a lot of downtime too. Okay. Especially right, in good. spring training. All right. Um, you recently had photo day. Yes. It's, yeah. Is that just a pain in the ass that day? Do they take you from station to station, make you do all these silly little poses? Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Nice. The new uni? Yeah. yeah. The the new uni? Yeah. We'll get to that in just a second. Is Give us a little breakdown on what the whole day is. It almost takes like a whole half day, doesn't it? Photo? Yeah. Photo I thought, don't they? Yeah. Don't they move you from photo to photo and then... Like Nesson wants you to do a bunch of silly poses that they have to use. You know for... what? It was very light. There might have been one, two, th- there might have been five or six stations. Oh. And each one took about two minutes. That was probably the lightest photo day I've ever had, to be honest. God. Now we have our like media week starting oh. on Monday, which is where we go and do all the green screen, like, oh. yeah. Oh. <laughs> You know, oh, yeah, let's go. Like all that stuff. Is that the sort of shit that they play on the scoreboard and stuff? Yeah. Scoreboard, TV commercials, like whatever it might be. Yeah. <laughs> you get into character with your family acting background or is this, do you have to call Casey for tips? Um, No, I mean, I don't know. I've I've been doing it for so long now. It's like. You know, you just do what they tell you to do, and then, you know, if you feel like, mm, I could do that better, you ask for another take, or maybe they're like, oh, do it this way, and you just, it's pretty simple. I mean, we don't have to, I have done stuff delivering lines before, but, you know, it's never like a long script. Okay. All right. Um, since we're here at the uniforms, are they as bad as everybody says? So... <laughs> They don't look good. <laughs> like there's like, you know, stitching coming out and the the letters are really small. Um they feel everyone says they like feel cheap. I don't know like I've actually been rocking it no undershirt and it's felt comfortable. It's been very comfortable. It's very lightweight. I've only worn the white pants once for photo day and I didn't even like really notice that they were as see-through as what's being shown now. So yeah, we'll see. I wear the white pants on Sunday for my game. Yeah. That's a special one right there. I mean, if you're Casey Schmidt's teammate, how do you not have that plastered all over the locker? Oh, it probably is. It probably is. I mean, yeah. How does that get out? We it's too much brain. I don't know, <laughs> you know, the whole how it went, like how it go <laughs> the the whole process of approving everything. How did it, it must, you know, people must have been looking at it, right? Like it has to hit different levels of the chain. And then this is yeah, this is what we got. So cool. I mean, I don't even know who that is on the Padres. I don't think I want to know, but we can see Wiener. Sure thing. <laughs> are we trying? Are we trying to market the game differently? Is that what it make, is? Did you guys make have baseball sexual again? <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, so how's this going to play out? Do we think? Do we think they're going to scrap the pan? We're too far into this, aren't we? I don't know what to do. I don't know what they're going to do. We might just be rolling out there. Oh, you know, God. some guys might love it and other guys might be wearing like three pairs of compressions, you know? We'll see how it goes. 
All right. Um, I talked to Merrill Kelly of the Diamondbacks the other day, and he said, listen, I am an enormous sweater. I was like, you know who else Oh, is? my. Yeah. yeah, my buddy Lucas Giolito. Yeah. And there's nowhere to hide for you when you're on the mound. So do you have a strategy yet? For what? Well, I mean, we don't want to get big swamp ass out there on the mound and all of a sudden look like you pissed yourself. Well, I mean, it's all I've already had that my whole career. Like the jersey I've worn, I'll sweat through them and then you do uniform changes. Like I'll I'll change the top a lot throughout the course of a start. Uh maybe two, three times. But now maybe we're gonna have to do the same thing with the pants. What a pain in the ass. You know what? We we need to hire like a NASCAR pit crew for you. Because now with the pitch clock in between half innings, you don't have much time. So we're gonna have to get some guys on the bench, you know. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like quick changes um for like plays, musical mm-hmm. theater. Maybe just hire someone from you know, the local theater to <laughs> hey, just like stand next to my locker and when I come upstairs, just be ready to throw the new uni on. Oh my gosh. Wahoo! Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no sweat bet up to $1,000 back in a bonus bet. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ROSE and new customers can get a no sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code ROSE, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of the Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. One no-sweat bet per customer issued as one bonus bet based on an amount of initial losing bet. Bonus bets expire 160 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash promos for deposits, wagering, and eligibility restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Now back to the show. That's insane. Well, I can't wait to see how it all unfolds, literally, right in front of our eyes. Uh, By the way, there's not a, a Netflix crew in your room with you right now, is there? Not currently. There was yesterday, though. Really? Yeah. And how's that going? Good, good. Yeah, I mean, Greg, I believe, is the man in charge. He's been great. Uh, the whole crew, um, super nice people. A lot of them are from Boston. So I think that they have a little personal connection. They're really enjoying it. You know, I'm talking camera crew and uh, sound guy, like everything. Um, there's one camera guy that goes around on like a hoverboard. And he has a whole contraption with the uh, camera on, like, I forget what it's called, but it keeps it steady. Like, um, so he'll just be like hoverboarding around the field while we're doing PFPs and like through the weight room when we're lifting weights, just like getting, getting different angles. Um, but yeah, they came over yesterday, came to the house, uh, hung out with me and my girlfriend, you know, just like, so got content of us like talking and cooking dinner and stuff. Okay. And it, yeah. it didn't, it wasn't strange for you? Uh, a little bit, but at the same time, I think they do a very good job of like making us all comfortable. I mean, they've been doing it for so long with, you know, F1 and uh, golf and whatever else, other projects they've done. So I think that, um, they have a good way of like approaching it, uh, very good communication kind of across the board. So yeah, I thought it, thought it went well, you know, maybe do some more of those like in home or, you know, away from the field type of things during the course of the season as well. Did, did, was there a, uh, preliminary meeting with like the entire team to go over, Hey, we're going to, we're taking you behind the scenes, but here's where we're drawing the line. If you're uncomfortable, parameters etc they had that last year 
So last year was when it was like being pitched, and I think it was pitched around to multiple teams. I think the Red Sox were kind of up there, and the team held a vote at the time. They voted in favor. So I was made aware of it, I think, like right before I signed or, or right after signing. It's like I was made aware, oh, yeah, Netflix is going to be here with us all year. I'm like, all right, that's cool. So then throughout the beginning of spring training, it was more like, you know, go and meet the guys, meet, you know, the people working on the project, you know, have your own personal conversations, ask whatever questions you want. And then I think a few days ago, um, Greg got up and addressed uh, the entire squad, answered questions, kind of gave his vision for, you know, what he wants to do. Like you said, parameters and stuff like that. What was the either the best question or best thing you heard from the meeting? I think a lot of guys. I think a lot of guys' main concern is like sometimes, you know, in the clubhouse, you might say something that you want to keep between you and you know the one or two guys you're talking to because you're in the clubhouse and it's supposed to be like that safe place, the sacred place, right? But it's like that fear of like, oh shit, what if there's like a boom mic operator right behind me that I didn't notice when I'm having this kind of private conversation that I don't want to be on television to hundreds of millions of people. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was, I'd say one of the main kind of questions it was asked in a few different ways. And, you know, the, the answer to it is essentially like, when you see us around, like just know that, you know, certain things could be picked up and whatever. We're not out to get you. Like, you know, another question is like, you know, I say something and it's like cringy or whatever, like that's going to be embarrassing. But, you know, it's explained to us in the sense of like, well, everybody will have moments of saying a cringy thing or having a down moment or whatever. Like that's part of the human experience. It's part of being a baseball player. Like, and so they hope to just create a cool story, different storylines with different guys and uh, the whole team in general. And, you know, be able to like show, you know, not just exactly what we want to show all the time, but you know, the whole, the real deal. and. Um, you know, the hope in that is to like give insight to fans and I mean, whoever might create new fans, like people are just scrolling on Netflix, like, mm -hmm. oh, I like drive to survive. I'll check this out. And then you get to see like the human element of being a professional baseball player, being a coach, being in the clubhouse staff, they're falling around clubhouse staff guys yesterday, getting a lot of content on that, um, training staff i mean everybody it's not like just about the players i don't think so yeah it'll be uh pretty interesting i uh i love the idea i wish it it would come out in bits and pieces during the season instead of like hard knock style yeah i i wanted that part um i'm also very curious about the team aspect because as great as their shows have been with f1 and with golf and now with nascar mm -hmm. Even though there, those there's team aspect to it, it's not a competitive team where we're going against the Yankees and the Blue Jays, et cetera, et cetera. Inevitably, you're going to have a time where you guys suck during the season and you've lost eight of ten. It happens to every team, whether you're good or you're not good. And now these cameras are in your face and you're like, fuck, can't we get away from this shit? Did they talk to you at all about that? Did you, did you just refer to us as not a competitive team? No, what I said is, even if you're a good team, you're going to lose eight of ten. I yeah, of course, that. but that's part of, like, that's part of the experience, right? So I think that the main concern for guys, and we all have this, right? Like, if you're putting yourself out there, whether it be on Instagram or you're doing a TV spot or you're doing something, um. You don't want to be like taken the wrong way. You don't want something to be taken out of context, or you you want to be careful that you're saying the right things, right? Mm -hmm. So, I think the the concern is like, oh shit, 
you know, they're going to get a lot of stuff. And so when it comes out, I hope that like, it doesn't make me look like an asshole, but at the same time, like there are times where we're assholes, like, you know, it is what it is. That's just part of it. And it's like, kind of like understanding same thing with what you're saying, right? There's going to be times where you might lose eight out of 10 and guys are pissed the fuck off. And it is like a rough environment to be around. Um, and there might be some like good storylines in that, right? It's like showing what it's like, what it's really like when shit's not going well. Um, and then the climb out of it, you know, and then it's like, oh, we get hot again. It's like, cool. Spirits are high. Like, I don't know. I think, I think it'd be cool. Um, I hear what you're saying though. Like if it was shown in bits and pieces, like more of that hard knock style, mm -hmm. then like people would be able to follow along as the season's following along. I, it, yeah. It's going to be more of that. Like you digest it. I mean, you know what happens. The same thing with um, Drive to Survive. Like every season I watch, I already knew who won, what team won, and what racer won, right? But it's like, just kind of, it's like if you're a fan, you get that insight into, oh shit, mm -hmm. like this is really what they're doing on a daily basis. Like, this is what their life is like outside of racing, things like that. So, yeah, I think we'll, um, you know, I think they'll do a good job with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, yo, who who knows? There might be a time where we're like, no, we don't want them in here today. And they're gonna respect that. Like they're I don't think they're like with us every single day. No. Um, and they're gonna there's gonna be certain road trips that they're gonna want to go on. There'll be certain road trips they take off, there'll be times at home when they're not around, like so. But at the end of the day, like as Greg told us. If we're if we're at all like encroaching on your space or doing something that like you're not comfortable with, tell us to screw off and we will. Great. So yeah, I, I love it. I am all for it. I am all for it. I think it's going to be great. I think it'll be a great. I think you're always open minded about stuff. Anyway, I think guys who are uh, on the fence about it will end up enjoying it probably much more than they anticipate. Certainly hope so. Yeah, that's what, yeah, he said that he said he's had, you know, in filming a lot of different sports athletes and whatever, you know, especially when they like go to your house, a, l a lot of people will be like, oh man, like I'm like opening up about some stuff that, you know, I've never really, it's like a bunch of people are going to see this and it's like kind of uncomfortable, but then, you know, you get used to it and it's like, you become okay with it. Um, so like, for example, like you know, my, uh, my girlfriend and I, like we were having a conversation that they were obviously filming. We got on the topic of anxiety and I was like talking about like performance anxiety I've had in the past. And, you know, she's talking about the anxiety she deals with. And, you know, we're just having this like natural conversation about it. And I'm like in the back of my head, like, oh shit. Like a lot of, if they choose to use this right at the end of the day, the, the, the show is going to be made in the editing room, but it's like, if they choose to use this, like a lot of people are going to be seeing, you know, me talk about these experiences and she, you know, people are going to be hearing her talk about these experiences and that can be a little daunting, but at the same time, when you think about it from the other end, it's like, you know, that could help, help people. It could connect. Um, people could find connection in that and be like, Oh, cool. Like this person I'm watching on TV is talking about the same shit I go through all the time. Like, no. Well, not only that, I, you know, in the three years we've done this now, I think you've been pretty open. I mean, you've gone through some serious life changes and you've had some great times on the mound and you've had some not great times on the mm -hmm. mound. And last year you were being passed around like you were a t-shirt at, you know, sleepover camp. Like it, it, there was some crazy shit that went on with you. And I'm happy that you're sharing all that stuff. Did you have a chance to like take a deep breath this off season? Yeah, a little bit. Vacation, chilling. Um, yeah, good times. Okay. More of our conversation with Lucas Giolito coming your way. But first, I want to tell you about a new and a different podcast and a video series that you're not going to want to miss. It's called The Deal, and it's co-hosted by Alex Rodriguez. Yeah, that guy. 
Dude who used to wear number 13 for the New York Yankees and number three for a few other teams as well. Well, each and every week, A-Rod and Bloomberg reporter Jason Kelly, they speak with big-time athletes, entertainers, executives, Maria Sharapova's out there, Michael Strand, Derek Jeter, and more. By the way, have those people accomplished anything in life? Yeah, so is A-Rod. That's why you're going to want to listen to The Deal. In fact, The Deal takes you behind the scenes into the world of sports and media and entertainment and dives into the wins and losses and lessons learned along the way. Now listen, A-Rod... We get it. Polarizing figure. But he's learned as well. He's had so much experiences, successes, failures. He's had uphill battles. He's been at the top of the mountain. And he can relate. He understands. And he's being real in these conversations. So from Bloomberg Podcast and Bloomberg Originals, you can listen to The Deal on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. Enjoy. You eventually settled on Boston. I think he signed pretty relatively early compared to a lot of guys. A lot of these guys, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, considering we're they're, we're still missing some as we tape this this episode. Um, when you signed with Boston, what was the thing that drew you there? A lot of things. Well, let me take a sip of water and I'll answer your question. Okay. Look, 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 look. So. My initial meeting was on Zoom, kind of like what we're doing. And AC's on there, Bailey's on there, Breslow's on there, and then a bunch of their other support staff as well. I am still learning. I'm learning a lot of names right now. Big staff. So I'm like, I got it's a lot, a lot of names to, to memorize, and, and I'm trying. So. They're all, you know, they're all on there and kind of get into pitching and they're asking me questions about how my year went and they're showing me a lot of information, um, biomechanical stuff, analytical stuff, uh, general pitching stuff. And I'm like, Ooh, I'm clicking with this. Like I'm in this meeting and I'm like locked in. And I'm and I'm seeing some stuff I've never seen before when it came to like, oh well, when you're in this position, this happens. When you're in this position, this is what's been happening. Um, and we have like some great tools and we're looking to communicate on a daily basis and get the best version of you. You know, the version that we know you have in you. And they just showed a lot of con like I felt that confidence. Like if you're with us, like we want to make you better. And we want you to do your thing, you know, help lead this staff, throw a shit ton of innings and, you know, let's get after it. And so I was very wowed by that. Um, I was immediately super interested with working with uh, Bales, Bailey, because uh, he's had a great track record. San Francisco, um, he played played for the Red Sox, actually. Mm -hmm. Um and he has a great relationship with Ethan Katz. They go back. They work together with the um, Giants. Hmm. And so uh, I noticed, you know, they have a really good relationship. They had a great working relationship as well. And I noticed early on that um, Bales and Ethan kind of think similarly when it comes to like coaching. Uh, they work similarly when it comes to coaching. And so... You know, it felt like this would be a very easy transition for me since I've been working with Ethan my whole life. And now I get to, you know, work with someone that kind of works in a similar fashion, like gr amazing communication, um, you know, willing to throw out ideas, willing to back off when, when needed, like just there for you as a pitching coach. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. Like there for you wants to see you succeed, wants to see you get better, is willing to put in the work to make that happen. So uh, I feel very supported already, um, just a couple weeks in here. And then, you know, kind of on the side, AC is a dope manager, <laughs> um, super cool. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to developing my relationship with him more. Um, he's had a lot of cool things to say and he, you know, I didn't know this. I obviously wasn't with the team last year, but he's talked about how last season it was a tough year and he felt like himself personally, he was kind of dragging a little bit sometimes. So, you know, he took the initiative this off season, he, he got into really good shape. Um, so he's, you know, kind of lighter on his feet and bouncing around and, you know, that's great to see. Um, so then obviously it's the Boston Red Sox, like storied tradition. Uh, it's a really cool environment to play with a play there. I've played there as a visitor a few times and I would be in the dugout like, man, this is sick. And it's like, cool. Now I get to be there and you know, all those people will be rooting for me. So yeah. Overall, I feel like it was just like the perfect fit for me uh, as I was going through the uh, free agency process. So we talked about it on baseball today, your signing. And I it was interesting. Did you see the response to your signing by baseball fans in general? Did you pay attention to it? Oh, yeah. Makes my agent very happy. What did you think? Um, I mean, not much. What do you want? I don't know. Well, because there were, there was a certain faction that was like, hold on X number of dollars. And we all know what they are. They're all out there for a guy who did not have his best year. And Ploof and I said, but the guy gives you a start every five days. <laughs> And this sport, no matter what they think of starting pitching when they get to October, will pay guys to be there every five days because even the best ones in the league are not. Yeah, it's a hard thing. I think it's a hard thing to do. Um, and obviously, like, I put in the work. I'm not going to, like, toot my own horn. I put I put in the work. I have a good routine to stay healthy. It's not guaranteed. So knock on wood, right? But mm -hmm. um, I'm confident that I can stay healthy. I'll pitch through anything up to a certain point, right? You know, that's something that I think um, I learned from veteran guys. Uh, you Nowadays in the game, you see a lot more of like, oh, this doesn't feel so good. Like I need a bunch of treatment. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, and guys will like back off, go on the IL, whatever it may be. Um, I also think that the, how good guys stuff, I'm talking about pitchers, right? Like how good guys stuff is and how hard they throw. It's like inevitable. You're going to hurt yourself in some way. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I pride myself on like the work I put in to make sure that I can go and take the ball every five days. Um, now then obviously the goal is I go out, I take the ball every five days, and I give you really quality starts. You know, the last couple months of the season last year, I did not do that well. Um, I would take the ball, but it, it was disastrous at times. So now it's like, okay, I have my routine. Um, I've, I'm very confident that I'm going to give you innings. I'm going to stay healthy. But... You know, I got to get to a point of showing that good consistency. Um, I believe in my stuff, like big time, especially right now. I feel very good in camp. Uh, throwing pretty hard, changeups working well. So it's just a matter of like fill up the zone. You know, get those quick outs, go deep. Um, make the make the good pitches when you need to make the good pitches have that good mindset of confidence throughout the year. And that's that. And my goal is to throw 200 innings. I haven't done that yet. I know you want to. Um, this might be a silly question, but I want to ask it. Do you have to alter the way you pitch when your home ballpark is Fenway? And what I mean by that is, like, are there things you can get away with at the Oakland Coliseum obviously, because there's so much space. And we're talking about Fenway because it's one of a kind. Yeah. 
So I don't know. I saw a stat that if I was pitching in Fenway last year, I would have given up way less homers than I did. Not way, but it would have been fewer. Because so Good. many of them, well, so many of them were probably to like center and right field where it's deeper. And a lot of the ones to left field were like screaming line drive home runs that were like perfectly <laughs> barreled up. And those would hit the wall and come off and be a single or double at Fenway. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, love it. um, I don't know. I mean, I haven't heard anything from anybody here like, oh, you need to do this when we're at Fenway. Um, I know that we like to get certain practice things in. Like we yesterday was cutoffs and relays. We did those in the stadium because JetBlue is Fenway Dimensions as the Green Monster. Mm -hmm. But no, I think that as a pitcher in this league, it's already hard enough. Like you want to go out and just throw your best shit all the time. You know, if you're out there like, oh, well, because of the wall dimensions over here i should be throwing this instead of what i would have thrown if we were in the trop like no got it um i want to talk to you about the makeup of your team Raphael devers i don't know if you saw this mm -hmm. at his introductory press conference and people were asking him about what the team did or in some cases did not do during the off season so mm -hmm. i want you to react to this Everybody knows what we need. You know what we need, and they know what we need. It's just some things that I can't say, like, like out loud. But everybody that knows the organization and knows the game know what we need. Did you express that to them yesterday? Que si les he dicho eso a ellos ayer o en estos días. Tom, tan hoy entramos una conversación y le 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 toqué el tema, pero no le toqué el tema, sí. Yeah, I've been talk I talked to them. Yeah, you know. How's that sit with you? Um, I was asked that yesterday. Um, hey man, I just got here. Rafi <laughs> Devers has been here doing his thing for years, right? And I think that any player is has the right to, especially when they're established, a uh, player of his caliber has the right to go and talk to the front office, talk to, I know Mike Trout's doing it with the Angels, right? you know, voice your opinion. Like, Hey, I think that we need to bolster this or this or this. Um, so yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind if we signed more guys, obviously to make the team better. What am I going to be like, get, get an ego hit because we signed another starting pitcher. Absolutely not. It's like, cool. We just got better. Uh, but seeing, you know, I'm around the starters a lot, right? I've been watching some of the relievers throw here and there. I'm still trying to get to know everybody as fast as I can. But watching uh, the, some of the starters throw that I'm like paired up with, watching live VPs, etc. I mean, I got some real good shit, man. Like really good shit. Um, Bayo, how, um, who else? Who else? Wit, so they look good. Nikki P, Nick Pavetta looks fucking amazing. Um, I'm excited to be reunited with him because we were boys uh, in the Nationals organization coming up in the minor leagues. So, you know, if it's me and him, kind of like being that like veteran presence, I think we have a pretty good tag team going on for that. Um, if we get more, great. That's kind of how I see it. Just being positive. It's um, is there a po the question I asked on baseball today when we used that was, is there any possibility that it could ruffle some feathers of guys in a clubhouse? Like everybody knows about Rafael Devers, stud, three hundred million dollar ball player, last remaining piece of the twenty eighteen World Series champions. I love it that he's saying shit. Like I think I think it needed to be said by that guy. I'm just curious if guys in there you it doesn't bother you is it possible it can bother guys i mean maybe but it's like you'd have to have like I, it's like an ego thing you know i don't i don't run around with a giant ego i've never been that guy um have i seen have i noticed that in guys in the clubhouse absolutely not i really like the clubhouse atmosphere everyone's super chill has a good time together so far 
So yeah, I don't think that it's like, I don't think anyone's like over there, like, you know, punching the wall. Got it. Um, I'm curious, the highest paid pitcher in the game has never thrown a pitch in this league. Yamamoto. Yes. How interested are you in watching him and just being curious since you guys do the same thing for a living? I'm absolutely interested. You got more money than Garrett Cole. And we all know what Garrett Cole does. So, yeah, I mean, from what I've, I don't know, little things I see on Instagram or whatever, like he's got, he's so nasty stuff and he looks really good. Feedback's good. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, he's got to be really good. You think? I mean, for 300 300- 30 million or whatever it is. Yeah. Is that is I mean, I understand. Listen, more money for him is more money for players down the road. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't it odd though to pay a guy who's never pitched here before or gone through the minor leagues or anything? It is in it is a little insane. Yeah, but the Japanese system is different. Like, you know, the uh the league in Japan is very competitive. I think there's certain things he has to adjust to, I, you know, pitching on a five day. Correct? Are the Dodgers mm-hmm. doing a five day? Or are they doing a six day? I think five right now. Yeah. So like getting adjusted to that, getting adjusted to the difference in the baseball, you know, travel, et cetera, et cetera. I think you know there might be a little bit of an adjustment period with that. I don't. Will it affect his performance? No, maybe not. Maybe he just goes out and he's shoving all the time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the teams do their work, they do their homework. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's kind of where the number got up to. It is good. I mean, it's good for players. It's good for baseball. So I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be mad about it at all. Um, a recent signing for you. It's a buddy of yours. You really didn't know that Liam was signing there until he texted you. Swear to God. Yeah. No idea. He was like, yeah, the Red Sox did a really good job of not leaking it. So what, you were just w- hanging out at your place and he texted you and was like, hey. I wouldn't exactly call waking up at 7 in the morning hanging out. That's not oh. my favorite thing to do. But <laughs> we no, I was... Uh, yeah, I love my mornings. So we were texting like the week before and I'm like, you know, we were talking about whatever and then i'm like yeah so you know when are you going to sign what do you what kind of spot you looking at you know what teams blah 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 and he's like i'm trying to come over to you guys i'm like dude that'd be sick hell yeah that was it we don't talk for like i don't know five days or a week or something and i'm literally like getting dressed in my closet putting my shirt on i get a text from liam hendrix i open it up he said like where are you and i'm like in my closet getting dressed he said oh, okay i'm in the breakfast room i was like oh shit really <laughs> damn okay so i went i saw him he was doing his physical that day so like saw him for a second but he was doing a bunch of shit the next day you know he's getting acclimated with the team you know he's coming out for pfp it's sick it's been great can he throw this year yeah, so I'm not sure. Um, you know, I don't want to comment too much on medical shit, but Tommy John rehab, I don't I don't even know how they do it anymore. When I got it, I got Tommy John in 2012. I got the surgery in like August and I was pitching in games in like July. It was like it was like 10, 11 months. So I was back pitching in games, I want to say. Now a guy gets Tommy John and it's like 14 months, 15 months. Like, I don't know. Um, Liam, obviously you've talked with him before. You know, the type of guy he is, he's going to want to come back as soon as he can. Will they let him? Well, I, you know, what's the protocol? I don't know. I have, I have no comment on that at the moment. I don't know how that's going to play out. Tell you this Netflix is like, thank you. I mean, he's going to be, he could be an episode unto himself. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, he that's. Is. I mean, his like uh, vocabulary, though. Um, I mean, I know it's Netflix, so you get to say whatever you want, but he is Australian. <laughs> <laughs> he is as Australian as they get. Um, <clears throat> the Harvard Westlake Triumvirate. Two of the three of you have new homes. Two of the three of you were traded last year. Um, you moved from team to team to team. And so now you're in Boston and Flaherty is in Detroit and Max Freed is in the last year of his deal. How surprised are you that the Braves, with the number of guys that they extended early in their career, that the one guy they haven't, I guess there's two. It's Stansby Swanson, who they let go to the Cubs, and Max Freed. Like, I would have thought Freed was a no-brainer. Wouldn't you have? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess they just missed... I missed the. I think they missed the point of no return, right? Because they got everybody else so early in the first half of their career. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the Braves front office has their way of working. Um... And Max is going to get a lot of money. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it just didn't work out the way, uh, you know, certain points. I don't know. I mean, you know, <laughs> what do you want me to say? I'm just, I'm surprised. I am surprised with as many good moves. As I find it, made. yes, I do find it surprising that they're not like, yo, we want to lock you down. Yeah. What do you want? I do find that surprising, yes. Yes. But, you know, we'll see. I mean, could happen. Hey, you know, he could he could end up staying there. But he's just going to get a lot of offers. I think he's going to get a lot. That's yeah. Just me. Um, I got two other things, and we'll let you go about your way. Uh, one, speaking of Harvard-Westlake, did you see Pete Crow Armstrong, the way he showed up to Cubs camp? Yeah, he got the blue hair going. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever think about that? Like dyeing my hair like navy yeah. blue or red? Yeah, something. No. Nothing. Not for no me. interest. No. Do if a guy walks into the clubhouse like that, do you crush him? What do you what do you or just say, ah, be who you are? I'm a be who you are guy. As long as it's not like completely ridiculous. Hold on. <laughs> he's got he's got aqua velva blue hair. How much more ridiculous do we need? Looks like a video game character. He does. Well, he's a big avatar guy, he said. Yeah, I mean, it's like team colors. I don't know. I'm I he's young, like he's having fun. I think it's cool. I okay. wouldn't I wouldn't crush a guy for that. Yeah. Maybe poke a little fun at one him. time a one time a teammate, former teammate of mine showed up to the clubhouse with he got a fresh new fade and he had some writing into the side of it that really rubbed some guys the wrong way in the clubhouse. So, you know, that, you know, that's when you go like that, taken a little too far, but like hair dye, nah, cool. I don't care. Dye your hair, whatever color you want. What did he write in the side of his head? I'm the motherfucker. <laughs> no, it had to do with, um, you know, I'm trying to find a way to say this without it giving everything away. It had to do with like earn like it had to do with like earning like a spot or reward for his baseball acumen. And it was like, come on, dude, why why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Oh it was prior to this event happening and it had to do with it had to do with like I want to be part of this. I deserve to be part of this. So I'm going to get it put into my hair prior to the event happening. Interesting. And it was like, what are you doing? Ugh. All right. Last thing. College baseball, they had it in Gainesville, Florida. They had an inter squad scrimmage, and dude hit a home run off of his teammate. Now, this is a this is a scrimmage here, and this is what he does. 
and he's talking shit to his team. This is a teammate. Now, if you had been the pitcher that gave that up and your teammate is doing that to you, what is the protocol? Uh, I don't know what's going on in, in the Gators locker room. <laughs> they must they don't like each other, clearly. I mean it's not a professional, got... it's not like a professional thing to do. Right? I mean, you don't yell shit to your teammate. The pitcher and that hitter definitely have some sort of beef or problem, like uh, you know the be a girl issue. Yeah, girl issue, or I don't know. I didn't go to college. Why are you asking me this? I didn't even go to college. I don't know. <laughs> don't get a college guy that. on here. <laughs> you haven't had, te- you know what? I worked with a guy who had teammates that dated the same woman. And like at the same time? Yes. Yeah. And he said he was an NFL player. He said, listen, because there was a problem in the locker room. And he was a leader in the on the team. He walked over to the two guys and he said, listen, you get Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You get Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Your asses are mine on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty that is good, good man. I, wow. hope you haven't run, I hope you haven't run into that one in the clubhouse. No, I haven't seen that. Not, not since... Uh, not since the days of Crash Davis and Nuke Lelouch. Yeah. Jeez. It's a different time now. Yes, it is. Y'all get on your you could throw on your gamer headsets and you go back to your uh back to your rooms. There's Stay a lot of that. Normal. That is true. Nothing wrong with it. Uh good catching up with you, my friend. Stay Absolutely. healthy this spring. Did you already find a place in Boston? We're yeah, yeah. Found a spot. Just gotta um I think the application got approved. Which is good. Well, and how would your application not get approved? I don't know. I'm not a felon, so that's good. <laughs> um, application got approved, and just gotta you know continue that process. Would you sign like an eight month lease? Yeah, it's like it'd be like six or eight or something like that. Yeah. Hope you went eight. You know, have some confidence in your boys. Oh, yeah. Well, no, the thing is, like, I do these leases, and it's like, you can always just, I'll be like, oh, you know, let me prorate it a month or two or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, next time we talk to you, I'm sure it'll be during the regular season, and venture out into the city of Boston. It's a great, don't don't your parents live on the Northeast now? Yeah, upstate New York. They're pretty close. That'd be nice. Absolutely. Your your dad can come to Fenway and then not um, sit in his chair and watch you pitch. Yeah, I'll just be like walking around the concourse. <laughs> Short concourse, small. Everything's yeah. tight there, including mm-hmm. the seats. I can't get my rose fat ass in those things very comfortably. It's a real pain. Real pain. Yeah, the last time I was there, I got tickets for my parents, and my dad's seat was like right behind one of the um, one of the uh, beams. Yeah, one of the posts. <laughs> Couldn't see anything. <laughs> Let's work on a few better ducats for him next time, please. Thank you. All right. um, Like I said, go out, pitch well, be healthy. We'll catch up during the regular season. Good seeing you, man. Yeah, great to see you, Chris. Appreciate you. Uh, For our awesome producer, Robbie Chiracco, and Lucas Giolito of your Boston Red Sox, I am Chris Rose. We will see you next time here on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.